Hey everyone, Katie and Sergeant Steele here, and today I want to talk to you about magnetizing the Rogel Dorn. So, you may be wondering right off the bat, Katie and Sergeant Steele, why would we magnetize such an amazing kit that has friction fit components? Such as, look, we'll take the little miniature demolisher cannon, right, and it just slots right in. And you're like, so why do you need to magnetize it? Well, great question. And it's really a point of preference. And for me, it's about a couple different pieces of this. So let's talk about it. One, the friction fit components are wonderful. All the new guard kits pretty much have friction fitting weaponry, which is absolutely amazing to be able to change that out. For me as a hobbyist though, I have a little bit of an issue with it because the friction actually chips the paint away the more you interchange your weapons. Probably isn't too often, but for somebody like me who likes to try new things all the time and change out my war gear, that's a lot of potential paint chipping. So instead, what I like to do is file down the um, outer edges, something like this, to reduce that friction fit and then use magnets instead. The other thing is for things such as the side sponsons. So here you can put heavy bolters or multi meltas into here. Now, these can fit with friction, and in this kit, the Royal Dorn usually fit better once you actually have paint on it. They're fairly loose beforehand. For this, though, I've lost these at tournaments, or they fall out, especially with my Lehman Russes. I never did magnetize those, but for this kit, I want to do that to make sure the guns don't fall out while I'm playing, or I don't lose them while I'm going around at conventions or tournaments. The other thing about this kit is that it has these two hull mounted weapons so they're either heavy stubbers or they're melted guns i'm going to magnetize these so that i can swap them out and once again they're such small components right look at that especially compared to my finger it's very small i want to make sure i do not lose these so i'll be magnetizing these as well and be going over how to do it last the main weapons now these have a slot on the back and fit in here onto the turret, but they don't set with friction. These are not friction fit pieces. You could make them that way, getting a little extra thick paint in there or something like that. So they kind of like stick in. Uh, they don't really hold too well if you do it that way. So I want to magnetize these so that I can swap out my barrel options for my Rugal Dorn. So I will be doing that in this video. So. This will be a full magnetization of the entire vehicle. So quick thing about preparation for this process. In this video, I have decided to keep my Rural Dorn in sub sub assemblies. So in other words, I haven't glued on the top yet as well. I actually haven't glued on the front panel. This is just slotted in and I haven't put on the two components that go here and here that then lock this in place. And the reason being is I wanna show you how I get magnets back in behind here. And I'm leaving this off just for, well, because of this, this front panel here. Uh, and also just in case, uh, we do wanna talk about what you can do underneath of the turret as well. Um, I've already built one of these and tried everything out to see what would work and what would fit. I did magnetize my turrets and the people that go in them along with the gunner on the back of the other one. This one, I do want it to be visually different, so I'm going to have no tank commanders or gunners uh, that are exposed and everything is shut. So this tutorial will be a little more simplistic. I won't be showing you how to do the crew, but I will be showing you how to do all of the weapons. And so this is the condition you generally need your Rogaldorn to be in. Whether you have the tracks here on the vehicle or not is up to you. Mine are off because of painting preferences as I prefer to paint my tracks separately and then put them onto the models. Oops, I just knocked off the side armor panel. That'll be a good blooper. All right, make sure to assemble your model well, everybody. Okay, so let's get started on the supplies that you will need to make this happen. For today's tutorial, you're going to need the following supplies. I recommend two by two millimeter magnets. Now. The reason we're using a deeper magnet rather than a shallow magnet, because you could use a two by one millimeter magnet, is because these have extra strength. They actually have more pull and will hold your weapons and other magnetized features in place. We will be using three by two millimeter magnets, and you could optionally get three 
by one millimeter magnets. I do get all my magnets from the Magnet Baron, so, and I highly recommend the quality of magnets that I get from him. Along with Magnet Baron, you can get these magnet applicators. You have red and blue. Uh, they are different polarities. And what I like to do, is this helps me memorize the polarity in which I use my magnets. Blue for me is always for the body or hull, and red is always for the weapons or the war gear. So this makes sure that all of the things that I magnetize are always at the exact same polarity. So everything's interchangeable among models as well. You will need a drill bit and vice pen. So I have my army painter set here and my vice pen here to apply that. Now, it's a great tool in case you don't have one because you can apply your palm here, grab it here and twist as you drill in, allowing you to apply extra force as needed. I always recommend a hobby knife. So I got mine here. Tweezers, just in case you need to pull anything out, little bits of plastic or maybe magnets that fell inside of something. Of course, your model, possibly a file. Green stuff is optional, um, but if you don't have green stuff, instead what you can do is you can glob up some super glue. Speaking of which, I recommend one of the two types of super glue here. They're, these are both really the same. It's uh, super gold. Uh, you know, Bob Smith Industries makes it, but you can also get a Magnet Baron version of it. Um, this is really nice because, as you can see here, it says odorless. As well, it doesn't off gas as much as regular super glue. Say, like normally, what I buy is crazy glue, uh, and I like the precision tip applicators the most to make sure I get the super glue where I need it. Optionally, you could also have a drill, but. Do be careful when using a drill, as since this has more speed and power than your pin vise when you're using it with your hand, you could easily slip and injure yourself. So do make sure you take caution when using a power drill. For the next step, we're gonna first magnetize the turret, the most important option of this vehicle. So one thing I like to do, we're using the three by two millimeter magnets that I have here in my hand. So to verify that we have a drill bit that's the correct size, what I like to do is apply it to the back of my drill bit, and take a look at it to compare the diameter. You don't want the drill bit to be too much bigger than the magnet, and it definitely cannot be smaller, or good luck getting that magnet to seat all the way in um, without the issues of your super glue or other things getting in the way. So this is about a one eighth of an inch magnet or sorry drill bit and these are about one eighth inch magnets with three millimeters so this lines up perfectly okay so i'm going to use my pin vise to start with uh so i've put my magnet in here sealed it in or sorry my drill bit so let's talk about how we're going to magnetize this to the turret so the turret does have these three slots here on the front the two options one has a center slot that goes in the other one has two side slots, but here's the great thing to note about this kit. Oh, wonderful, wonderful GW. They do have really good design oftentimes, and these two holes for the barrels line up. The other thing is, is this hole here is lined up with this slot that goes into the turret. So what we're going to do is drill this out and this out and this out, and then we're gonna have to modify this over here a little bit with some green stuff. And that will allow for us to drill two holes on the centered left and right of the two outer slots in order to create points to magnetize our model. So let's start with the turret itself. We're gonna first get started and here's what I always recommend. When you're going to drill, do it gently and get a pilot started, right? And we wanna make sure we're getting it exactly where we want it. We do not want this. Ah, see, it's going well. Sorry, I have to do this at a little bit of an angle because where my camera sits. There we go. So let's look. What I've done is I've got a nice pilot hole started. Look at that. It's less than a millimeter from the edge of the slot. And so that'll be enough to keep some plastic in between, but it's not so close that it's furling out and pushing into the slot. And it is also centered. So we want to drill two holes this way 
and then also drill out the back of our barrels. So, all right, first one's done. Remember, if you do accidentally drill a little too high or a little too low, you can correct it just by simply taking your drill bit and angle it one way or the other. Go down like this in order to change the slot just a little bit. I'm actually gonna do that on this one over here. There we go, okay. So my slots are generally centered and level. I wanna change that one just slightly. Okay, there we go. I believe that'll fit better, okay. We'll start with the double barrel first. So we'll start with this one and just go in here. We're just gonna drill in. You don't gotta drill in too far, right? Cause the magnets are only two millimeters deep. Drill in just enough so that you can fully see the magnet in there. Now you wanna be careful cause you don't wanna drill too shallow. If you drill too shallow and you go to glue your magnet in, these do sit pretty much flush. So if your magnet sticks out, and then you go to put it on here, it'll look funny. So instead of seating nice like this, you could stick out like that. And that would look a little goofy. So do you make sure that you drill deep enough to get your magnets all the way in, but not too shallow so that they stick out. Okay, there we go. So next, like I said, we'll use the applicators. So now we got our three by two millimeter, two millimeter magnets, but I recommend putting one on your applicator. Grab a little bit of super glue. For this, I'm gonna be using uh, Bob Smith Industries Super Gold Plus. Um, it's a really great super glue and it does not off gas the same as say like crazy glue does. So it's also good for clear plastics even, or if you're repairing a model, and you don't wanna frost it over. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get a tiny bit of super glue into each slot here. Okay, oops, well, a little bit more than a tiny bit, but all you gotta do, then take your applicator, push it in to make sure it's flush, remove, repeat. Okay, the next we're gonna switch to our red applicator and we're gonna to switch to the back of here. Now this is gonna be a little tricky, so what you gotta do is generally get the magnet somewhat towards the outside of your applicator or whatever uh, tool you're using to push the magnet in so you can actually get it into the hole here. Okay. So, we're gonna just push it in and then we're done. Now I got a little extra super glue on here and you can just clean it up any number of ways uh, you can wipe it up with a little piece of tissue. You could wipe it up with your magnet. Any number of ways you want to get that super glue cleaned up. So the other thing you could do if you don't have a magnet applicator is you could just take a whole stack of magnets, push it in and break it off like this. Then take your plastic applicator tool and gently push it flat like that. There we go. So. It's an alternative method to using these magnetic applicators. For the other barrel, we're gonna have to create a custom moment for this. So, to line it up, what you're looking for, I've already put my one three by two millimeter, two millimeter magnet in. So what you wanna do now is you actually wanna chip away and get rid of some of the back of the molding here, back behind the auto cannon. This is about where you see I've drilled a pilot hole right above my drill bit there. That's about where the middle of our other barrel is on our other turret option. So we're gonna drill in here and chip away at that in order to create a moment where we could get a magnet in there. Nice and flush, the same as the other. So what I do is I get this in here and I kinda just angle my drill bit, right? I chip away a little bit. You could use an X-Acto knife, right? Hobby knife. And also cut away at it. Oops, speaking of which, hobby safety. Now, the reason we can't drill in too far is it's actually rather thin right here. So if we drilled in too deep, we would actually puncture the armor plating here of the turret, of the front of the turret. We don't wanna do that, right? We don't wanna put a hole in there. 
So be gentle with it. Don't drill too deep. All right, that's starting to look like it's enough. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. We'll give it a we'll give it a shot and we'll see how that works out. Okay. So hopefully that is correct. It looks like it. Um, because here's what we do know, right? This, this moment here behind the auto cannon does not stick out farther than this. It's gotta at least be flush. Otherwise, this wouldn't actually sit on the front of our turret. So that means we just need to get the magnet to at least the height of the back of the auto cannon right there. That's what we're looking for. So once again, uh, I'm back to my applicator. So I'm gonna use the red applicator and we're gonna get a little bit of super glue. Put a little bit of super glue there. All right. Apply it. Now this can be a little trickier because I don't have a full hole around it. So you could do one of two things in this situation. This super glue is going to dry, but it's not going to have as much friction and as much holding it in place because um, there's no plastic around the majority of the magnet, right? Look at that. It's probably one and three quarters of a millimeter exposed on this one side over here. Oh, get the camera in focus. Okay. So with that, you could use some green stuff, right? Get some green stuff, some two part epoxy ball it up, stick it in there and in around it, and that'll help create a better attachment point. That is actually what I've done on my first rope dorm, but here I wanted to show you doing it without green stuff in case you do not have any. What you can also do is wait for that to dry, make sure it sets well, and then just stick a little more super glue in and around that opened area to build up and create a better moment of friction and attachment so that your magnet doesn't come off later. There you go. That's one way you can do it. For the next part, we're going to magnetize the sponsons. So this vehicle has two sponsons available and it has either bolter options or a multi-melta option. So as you can see, here's the multi-melta. And for this, I'm actually going to, instead of using my uh, pin vise, I'm going to use my drill. So when using your drill, if you have one, uh, do make sure that, you, like I said, you do it slowly, you do it gently, and you take your time. Because if this slips and it's moving at a high rate of speed, you can severely injure your hand. So do be careful. As always, I recommend making a bit of a test, a bit of a pilot hole, right? Mine's a little off, so I need to adjust. And then, once I have it centered and where I want it, Go ahead and drill in. Okay. So, for this part of the project, we are going to be using two by three, two by three millimeter magnets again, uh, same as we had for the main turret. And so I've drilled my hole there uh, to get that ready. Now we want to do the same thing here, centered on the inside of the sponson mount. So once again, get your drill, get nice and centered. Okay. Now on this one, I've made a little bit of a mistake. I didn't test my pilot hole and my holes up a little too tall. So I am going to adjust that by taking the drill and pushing down a little bit with the drill bit to try to take out some of that lower part there and get my magnet hole a little more centered up. Do the next one. That looks nice and centered. Okay, there we go. Okay, for gluing the weapons, this is going to be rather easy. It's nice and flat on the backside. So when we're gonna put the magnet in, it's just gonna sit right in there. So we're just gonna put a little dab of glue. Not too much, cause you don't want the glue coming back out of the hole you've drilled for the magnet, creating too much of a mess. So once again, I'm using my red applicator and I'm just gonna push in. There we go. It's nice and flush. See that? It's not sticking out. That's what we want. Okay, so I'm just gonna apply my other magnets.
for the sponsons themselves, this is a little bit trickier because we can't really push the magnet flush with the applicators I've been using. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna put a tall row of magnets onto the applicator. We are going to then put a little bit of glue and just try to get it on the one magnet on the end here. And you want it on the upper rim of the magnet. It's going to touch this. And then we're gonna push it in. And then we're gonna remove the other magnets. What I like to do to not get super glue everywhere is to use my applicator, this wasted plastic applicator tool. Take off the extra magnet. All right, so when we're done, it's a little messy in there with the super glue, but it's fine. It's gonna dry pretty thin, so it's not gonna hurt the quality of getting that to sit flush in there. So it's in there, it's got glue on it, we'll let it set, and then we're gonna be good to go. Hey everyone, now's a good time to take a small break to tell you that I do have a merchandise store in case you'd like to support me. You can click on the link here on my YouTube page in the top right corner in order to go to my Stream Element store. Once you're here at my store, you can browse all the products that I currently offer. If there's something you'd like to see me offer, please let me know. What I really recommend this time around is the Organic Cotton Hobby Apron. This way, in case you're putting your magnets on your models and you're using super glue, you don't accidentally get that super glue on your nice clothes. As well, it has a funny phrase on it. Well, feck, I spilled my shade again. It also has nice handy pockets on the front, straps to tie around the back, and comes in several, uh, and comes in two different colors um, that you can utilize for yourself. The buttons are adjustable on it for the next strap as well, um, making this a very versatile apron to use for your hobby. For our next magnetizing option, we're going to do the hall mounted weapons. So here I have one of the stubbers and I already have my size drill bit. We're gonna be putting a two by two millimeter magnet into the back of this right here. Now we're also gonna modify these a little bit more to help make sure they fit better and that the magnetizing actually works because since these are such a tight friction fit on the front of the hull there, when we go to put this magnet in, it may sprawl out the outer edge of the plastic. And with that, you won't be able to seat the weapon properly and it might look a little bit silly on your model. So what we'll do is first we'll drill this hole, we'll apply the magnet in, and then we'll actually file down the outside of this just a little bit. Another thing that we will do is take a larger drill bit and drill out the insert area for this weapon a little bit right down the center so that if this did sprawl out a little bit it'll still slide in nice and neat and hit the other magnet and to drill this let's go ahead and get started all right as always especially because we don't have much room to work with here make your pilot hole check your pilot hole to make sure it's centered where you want it it's generally good enough for me for this Drill it. Now see here where it's eating away at the side of this just a little bit? I mean, there's only like a tenth of a millimeter in play here. So you gotta drill this, these ones really carefully. All right, I have a hole that's deep enough now. So I'm gonna grab one of my magnets, put it on my red applicator that I always use for weapons. Put a little bit of glue. There we go. And then, voila. It's nice and flush. So, go ahead and let the super glue dry though. Let it cure and get ready and then we'll file it down here in just a moment. Now we're gonna begin working on the hull in order to get our magnets in here for first the two hull mounted weapons and then your centered hull mount, mounted weapon here, which is that mini miniature demolisher cannon and the punisher cannon. I've put my three millimeter or one eighth inch drill bit back on my pin vise. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drill out the holes on the front here just a little bit, not much. Uh, it's actually very hard to do because it's almost the right diameter. All right, so right down the middle, as you can see, I've just bored that out just a little bit, right in the middle. And this is just in case that when I put my magnets in and I drilled out for the two millimeter magnets on the hull mounted weapons, 
that it's sprawled out. There we go. The, the plastic and then it wouldn't fit very well. So now, if I go to slide one of these in, it should just slide in with relative ease. And it does, look at that. Goes right in, right out, right in, right out. Relative ease, wonderful. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do as part of the next step. We're actually gonna work on the interior here, which is why I've left the top off. So, looking at the back side of where those two hull mounted weapons mount in, what we're going to do is take a couple of our weapon options here. Oop. We're gonna slide them in because their magnets are on here and now they're cured. All right, super glue is nice and dry. Oh, that's one I gotta, I gotta clean that one up a little bit. All right, slide these in. All right, because we can't necessarily get our applicators in here. But here's what we can do. We can see the magnets there. I can take, I have a three millimeter, you can't see it, but it's in my fingers, right? Three mil. Okay, so I have my, this is that special three by one millimeter magnet I have. It's all the strength I'm gonna to need to keep these hull mounted weapons in place. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna take it off the applicator. I'm gonna bring it down here, right? And I'm just gonna basically drop it in. That's right where that needs to go, right? I'm gonna get another one. All right, now both of those are in place. So you're like, well, wait, all you've done is set two magnets in here. They're not glued or anything, because notice I didn't do that. I didn't want to accidentally glue them to these weapons here on the front. So what I'm gonna recommend now is that we use a little bit of green stuff. You could also do super glue, but I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. Okay, so I've got my two parts of epoxy and I'm mixing it up here. So you just roll it up in your hands, right? go so it's nice and mixed right because now it's all green rather than the blue and the kind of yellow off green that it normally is all right so I'm gonna take a little piece of this all right not much then I'm gonna take I'm actually going to use a different bottle of super glue it's the same thing this one's from magnet bearing but it's the exact same super glue uh, but it's got a more fine tip applicator on it so what I'm going to need here, I'm going to take this. I'm going to place a tiny amount of super glue on that magnet right there. Okay. Then I'm going to push in the green stuff. So I won't be able to catch all this on camera super well. Okay. And a tiny bit of super glue is in there. Okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing here. We'll apply a little bit of super glue and push a little bit of green stuff on it. This time I'm not using water to help mold my green stuff because I don't want it to look ugly during the tutorial. Okay. All right. Little bit of green stuff. Not much. Up here. All right. Our next part is placing in the hull mounted weapons that are more prominent. And so that is the little demolisher cannon here and the miniature Gatling cannon. Uh, so with these, we will be using the two by two millimeter magnets that we have been using in our kind of our hull mounted weapons up here also. So same one. And that's because GW is pretty consistent with their model design. So right here, that diameter is just barely over two millimeters. So if we use our two millimeter drill bit and two millimeter magnets to drill it out and same with the interior of this to place our magnets, it should perfectly fit. So first thing we want to do, we'll actually drill out the hole mounted part. So once again, as always, line up your hole, start drilling it out very carefully. We don't have much room for error here. Okay. Look at that, my pilot hole is pretty much perfectly centered. Now, let's continue. Now with this, I wouldn't just go wild and start drilling through, drill a little bit. Stop and check, everything's looking good. Oh no, I've made a mistake. 
Okay. So what happened was it's so thin that while I was drilling, it kind of uh, broke off on the side here. So I can fix that by simply angling my drill bit in a little bit. Okay. So I can try to get away from that edge. There we go. All right. I've done it. Pushing just a little more. Okay. So the other thing we want to make sure of, by the way, is that the hole is deep enough for the magnet, and it does look like it. One of the ways you can check this is by sticking your drill bit in, and then pulling it out and measuring. That's definitely at least two millimeters, so that's enough. Okay. What we want to do, take our blue applicator, which this is just my pattern, blue is always hole or the body of the person. Put a tiny bit of glue in there. All right, not much. We don't want it flowing out and then ruining the fit of everything and then push it in. We're done. That simple. Now we have our new magnet seated in there. Next for the weapons, we just want to drill right in and create that two, two millimeter deep hole for mounting right here, perfectly centered inside of the slot that's already there. my second one there we go now for the demolisher cannon i do want you to note that it will be visible from the inside there see that the hole goes all the way through because the plastic's not thick enough there don't worry what i like to do normally when i paint these is I like the i do you know base coat the interior but then i also use black weathering pigments uh carbon weathering pigments and so you can hide that magnet just by doing that. Um, so that ought to be just fine. It won't be noticeable. That's what I'm saying is it won't be blatantly obvious. So here's what we want to do because we, once again, we can't push the applicator in to the depth of the hole. So I'm going to create a little stack of magnets here, get a little glue on the end of one and then push it in and pull the rest of them out. Okay, so I think it's easier here to apply our glue initially to the top magnet Try not to get it on the other one so they don't stick in place. Okay, and this is a great moment to use your little plastic tool you got here. Push the magnet down until it's flush. Voila, there we go. Sitting nice and flush down in there. Once that super glue dries, we'll be able to put it to the hall. Do same thing again right here. This time I'm going to reverse what I'm doing. I'm going to put the glue down in here first. There we go. So as you can see, that magnet's nice and seated in there. It's not sticking out the other end either. I know it's dark, but trust me on that. Okay. Now I would recommend our, our glue's probably set well enough here in the hall. We're going to test it out. Make sure this works. Wonderful. There we go. It fits perfectly well. Look at that. Seats right in, comes right out, no problems at all. So with that, our project is now complete. We have all of our options magnetized. As you can see here, easily swapping out and replacing any weapon that we might want on our model. The best part is, uh, because I use those applicators from the Magnet Baron, that means all of my stuff is universal. So, if I were to wear the, use these exact same weapons on, say, a Lehman Russ or another Rogel Dorn or any other model, my polarity is exactly the same and everything goes in and works together. So with that, we have a gorgeous Rogel Dorn and it's time for us to get some paint on it. So, that's what I'll be doing next. And I hope you all found this tutorial of the option to magnetize this model in its entirety helpful. All right, until next time, Cadia stands.